the plan B as it relates to the prior status quo related to opioid uh, prescribing is to do the opioid prescribing better now to make sure that one does the appropriate assessments and evaluations, making certain that if there is a need for opioid prescribing, that it be done carefully with all the reasonable precautions to prevent harm. But no plan, not A, not B, not C, should entail the lack of prescribing opioids because there are many circumstances when they're just plain medically necessary. I would encourage a primary care physician really to look at a variety of sources in determining what will be his or her prescribing policy and then practice as well. So that means looking at guidelines like the CDC guideline for opioid prescribing for chronic pain and primary care, but also to other medical scientific literature and input from experts, including the types of courses that uh, one is able to access through conferences like Pain Week. You have to be able to s cite a number of uh, veritable and uh, credible uh, sources as you develop what will be your approach to safer prescribing of any medication, but especially controlled medications like opioid pain relievers. I think that insurance companies and potentially even prosecutors are saying that the CDC guideline might be applicable to everyone in pretty much every circumstance, but we know that that guideline is really directed toward primary care practitioners who are not pain specialists who are prescribing for chronic pain and does not apply to acute pain even though it addresses some of the principles related to prescribing in those sorts of circumstances. But the reality is that a person needs to look at a variety of sources of medical and scientific literature in determining what his or her policy and practice is going to be in prescribing not just opioids, not just opioids for chronic pain, but any controlled medication where the risk is by definition higher than other medications.